Hi, we're going to look at another really common external threat to systems and websites in particular, which is a denial of service attack, also called a DOS. So, first of all, a DOS attack is one which is trying to overload a service, like a website really commonly, by the way the attack works is by flooding a server with malicious requests. So flooding, like a liquid flood, these are just loads and loads of requests to the service for various information. For example, every time you go on a website, you are requesting to the server to give you the web page. And so here, the attacker is just doing loads and loads of these requests, trying to flood, trying to overload the server so it stops working. To give you an example of how this might go, let's say we've got Alice, who is our perfectly fine authorized user. She's allowed to access, let's say, Microsoft. So Microsoft have got servers. Let's say these are web servers, servers being our really powerful computers which hold information and give information to clients. So Alice wants to access Microsoft's website, say, so she requests access to this web page and the server has got no issue, it gives it back and responds to her with the web page. That's how this communication should go. But if we've got a DOS attack happening, but let's say we also have a denial of service attack going on by somebody called Mallory, who is our attacker. He's going to request the same information Alice did, but he doesn't care, he doesn't want the website, he's just trying to overload the service. But Microsoft isn't to know this initially, so they will just respond as normal with a legitimate message, giving the web page to him. But he doesn't stop there, he's not gonna just accept this, he's gonna keep requesting loads and loads of times, maybe hundreds of times per minute, or even a quick of a miss if it's able to. And this can, if the server is not very powerful and hasn't got protection, may, innate, may cause it to crash. It may not be able to fulfill any of the requests coming from Mallory or from anybody else. So Alice might request it again, and this time she might get a response saying actually you can't have it or possibly even no response, but just because Microsoft servers are overwhelmed because of this denial of service attack. And the consequence for Microsoft or the company being affected is they're not able to function normally, it disrupts their operation, it denies service to their legitimate users, and so they can't make money or it causes inconvenience and so on, it causes issues for the organization. So there is a slight extension of a DOS attack, a DOS attack, which is a DDoS, which you may have heard of, especially if you do gaming or watch streamers and so on. It's a fairly common, unfortunately, attack. So a DDoS is different because normally a denial of service attack is coming from one source. We just have Mallory doing it from one computer, and that does limit the effectiveness of it because the company is able to block a person. So it gets a request from Mallory and the server just ignores it. It's not gonna reduce the issue so much, they can't just completely stop him, but they can ignore him and just try and forget it, which will partially stop the attack. It means they won't be wasting time sending responses to malicious requesters. That's why attackers have developed and don't just use one source to do this, they use multiple. So a DDoS, a DDoS, is a distributed denial of service attack, which means it's coming from multiple sources. That distribution is meaning it's coming from different computers, possibly different areas of the world. So here is a live DDoS map, and you can see what it's showing is, we've got some major data centers in the US, and it looks like they're being attacked with a DDoS coming from different countries and different computers. So each of these um, computers over here, each of these uh, dots, might be hundreds, might be thousands of computers which are infected, maybe with a botnet, and they are all attacking or trying to flood the same data center which is inside the US. So it's not just one source which can be blocked fairly easily. It's coming from lots of different sources. They might be changing really often. It's a lot harder to stop. And because you are having so many more requests, the flooding itself is more effective because the server gets overwhelmed.